Hey guys, Laura Timelapse 6.5 is ready and I would like to say a special thank you to all beta testers that supported me testing this new version. As you can see, it's called 6.5 and not 6.4 as the beta was called because there are so many new features and improvements. In this video I would like to walk you through the new version and of course give you some backgrounds that might be interesting to you as a Alert Time Lapse user. Let's get started! First thing that you might notice here in my file tree is that now we can have non-ASCII characters in the path names here. For example, these are some Chinese characters. Here we have some German umlauts in the path names. And formally, this has not been possible in LR timelapse, not because of LR timelapse, which supported Unicode characters, because some of the external tools did not accept them. Now we have a full Unicode file and folder name support, which allows you not only to have the folder names with special Unicode characters, but also to have the file names named as you would like them to be named. And this support from the Unicode character set was also the basis to allow additional translations in LR timelapse. To be honest, there was that one thing also that triggered me to add a Chinese translation to LR timelapse. One day I got a support request from a user using LR timelapse 6.3 or whatever. And he sent me a screenshot of our time lapse in Chinese. And I was like, there is no Chinese version of LR timelapse. Why is this screenshot showing LR timelapse in Chinese? And so I started exploring and asked him, where do you get that version from? And turns out there was a hacked Chinese version floating around, which Chinese people used just because there was no uh, translated version of the official LR time lapse. So I talked with that user and he agreed to help me do the translation to Chinese. Together we got that going and I would like to just briefly show you how this looks like. Now here in the settings you have all languages that you can select and now additionally we have Japanese and we have Chinese. So now you can see our time lapse in Japanese. Let's open a dialog. Here, for example, the render dialog. We have the nice Japanese characters, and the same goes for the Chinese language. My special thanks go to Kuichiro Oka for the Japanese translation and to Ji Hongbing for helping me with the Chinese translation. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys. Another user request was to change the sort mechanism in LR timelapse to allow a more natural sort, like it is known from Finder, Explorer, and also Lightroom, which would sort numbers, for example, like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 11, whereas the old ASCII-based text Sorting would do a sort like 1 and then 10 and then 2 and 3. Just from an IT perspective, that had been a correct way of sorting, but it just doesn't really match the way people perceive numbers. And that's why in the last years, nearly every software and OS changed the sorting to this more natural sort. And now this is also included in LR timelapse. And this new sorting would not only apply to the folder tree here on the left, but also to images that don't have EXIF data, for example. In that case, LR timelapse would switch to a file name sort, as you can see here. And then also you would have one, two, three, in this example, 10, 11, instead of 1, 10, 11, 2, 3, as it would be if you made a textual sorting. The sort order now in LR timelapse would be the same sort order than in Explorer, Finder and also Lightroom, making it more consistent working with those programs together. 
One thing that's very important to me is the performance of LR time lapse. Of course, also in 6.5, I've tried to fine tune some things to even increase the performance a little bit more. For example, I managed to speed up the initial loading of sequences straight from the camera. Let's make a comparison between LR time lapse 6.5 and 6.3. Let's load a fresh sequence here straight from the cam once in LR Timelapse 6.5 and in LR Timelapse 6.3 all together. Let's go! Ready! That was a sequence of around about 600 images and already you saw that massive improvement in speed. So imagine if you work with a couple of thousand images, every loading of a fresh sequence in the initialization will be much, much faster now. Let's have a look at the render dialog. I completely reworked how the cropped resolutions work. Let me explain. Normally, if you have an input sequence here of 4K like this, and then you render in full HD and your footage is 3 to 2 like in this example, then you would get 1080p footage exported, which means that your uh, width will be a little bit smaller just to not exceed the 1080 from the 1080p definition. So what happens now if you set an aspect ratio of 16 to 9 for example, then you will get of course 1920 versus 1080. So before the 1080 was interpreted as the fixed height. So if you switch now to a portrait cropping, then 1080 would still be the limiting factor giving you a narrower image like 500 something versus 1080. So now that people produce portrait mode stuff for mobile devices, then you could also interpret that 1080 as a rotated full HD where 1080 would be the smaller resolution and 1920 the bigger one. So what happens now is if we change this to 9 to 16, then you would get the resolution of 1080 versus 1920. This I think is more practical. Well, that whole topic is quite complicated and it really took me quite a long time to implement that. Because for example, now if we do a 2 to 1 aspect ratio, so now we would like to have the 1080 again because it's 1080p as the width and now the height is higher. It's 2160 in this case. So you can see there's a lot of uh, combinations. Indeed, I wrote a program to automate the tests for all the combinations of input resolutions and crops and it's uh, like 13 million combinations that that test routine had to test. So you see it's, it's quite complicated but it it's not your concern, of course. Just note that now if you are going to render for social media, for example, for handheld devices in portrait orientation, you will get the higher resolution that is mostly desired in those cases. Back in the main window of LR Time Labs, I've loaded a sequence and some people like to scrub through the sequence just with the cursor keys. If you have a row in the table selected, you can just press cursor down to scrub forward through the sequence and cursor up to scrub backwards. But what you could also do now is hold cursor right, which will hide the curves and scrub forward and cursor left will also hide the curves while scrubbing backwards. So basically by using the cursor up down, you can scrub with the curves and by using the cursor left-right, you can scrub without the curves. 
Also, the curves will scale better now if you have very few images or also if you have a very large sequence of images. For example, with few images now you will see the distinct images here in the preview. If the amount of images is larger than the resolution that the preview can accommodate then you will see lines as you are used to but then if you have fewer images then they will change to dots and that being said I've also changed the way that this location indicator here is painted basically you have a bright and a dark element here which will help you to see the location marker better in different situations. You might know that other time-lapse links the rendered videos to your sequences. So if you see this little play button here uh, then you know there is a video linked with this sequence. You can then either click here on the rendered videos and you can see I have a preview video and then I have a H265 video here also rendered. And what's new now is that you cannot only open this in Media Player but you could also just show the file in Finder or Explorer on Windows. Another tip just right click on any sequence and also you could go on show rendered videos for that sequence. And if you miss this indicator but you know that you have already rendered the video then the render folder might not be correctly assigned. In that case just go to assign default render folder and then choose the folder where your intermediary sequence and the rendered videos are located and then um, connect it again so that a lot of time lapse knows where to find those videos. But normally that assignment should happen automatically. But for example, if you move the folders on your hard drive, this is how to reassign them. Let's have a look at the importer. Sometimes when navigating this folder tree and you incidentally clicked on a parent folder that then would be scanned. For example, if you click on your user folder, it could take a long time to scan. That's because a lot of time lapse would scan every subfolder and offer to import everything under this folder. That is, of course, not how it's meant to be used. Normally, you would just click on your SD card reader and then import everything from that SD card no matter in which folder it's located. But if you incidentally have one of those folders selected you will get a warning if you are about to scan more than 15,000 images and then you can abort that. Otherwise you could end up in a deadlock with a lot of time that's just scanning and scanning. Also some system folders are now excluded. For example if you click on volumes nothing will happen. It will not try to scan all volumes. The same goes for some parent folders on Windows which will be excluded from the scan. If you use the internal editor for example here to edit something you will get that processing image but then you will still see the old image and see exactly what happens. In the former version it would pop back to the camera preview while processing and not keep showing you the old image. This is much better now because you really see the change that you do in the editor because it keeps showing you the old image and only then when finished pops to the new one. Let's say you are going to add a lot of images to batch processes. For example, just by using a whole parent folder and then batch initialization for this folder. Uh, then it will warn you about uh, adding all those folders as batch and before it just filled up the whole left side with those batch folders. Now you get a nice scroll pane here and it will show only one fourth of the screen height with the batch processes and not cover your folder tree anymore. 
There might be situations where you would like to transfer the whole edit from one sequence to another one. For example, if you are working with a stereo camera where you did all the keyframe in editing on one sequence, for example, for the left camera, and you would like to copy paste all the settings to the other sequence. So in this case, now you can just do that. Metadata, copy metadata of whole sequence. And then you just load the other sequence. Of course, it needs to have the same amount of images. And then you go to metadata, paste metadata, whole sequence, which will give you all the changes now also on the second sequence. Hit save and that's it. And the last thing that I would like to mention is that we now have an integrated updating mechanism for our time lapse. This is handy especially for better users that get updates more frequently but of course also for all others that will now not only get notified of an update but also be able to download that update right from inside our time lapse. If you click on yes, it will just start downloading the update in background and then offer to install it. If you say yes, it will close our time lapse right away and install the new version. If you say no, it will just wait until you close it manually next time and then uh, launch the installer automatically. This is only a fraction of the news in LR Time Lab 6.5. The things that I thought were most interesting showing you in this video. Make sure to check out the release notes and otherwise just enjoy working with LR Time Lab 6.5. If you have any questions, come to the forum. I will be there to answer them. If you find any issues, of course, let me know. Also, let me know if you have ideas for new features that you would like to see in LR Time Labs in the future. If you're interested in giving closer feedback to new LR Time Labs developments, make sure to subscribe to the beta channel. It's easy in the LR time lapse settings, just check notify on new beta versions. This will give you a reminder directly in LR time lapse when a new beta is available, and then you can use the auto downloader and installer to just update your beta. Give me feedback in the forum if you find anything. And yeah, it's an interesting way for you to help me to improve LR time lapse even more and also to bring in your own ideas. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the LR time lapse YouTube channel to get notified about new tutorials and so on that I will be producing in the future. See you soon. Bye bye.